burning, burning smell coming from their consumer unit when their car's on charge. I'm running late. Now I'm really late. So it's not just EV charges that I do. In between those jobs, what I try and do is small electrical jobs. Today I don't have an EV charging job on at all. So I'm just doing some general work. This is an old customer of mine and I priced this job through photos for yacht whatsapps. I'm replacing some down light. The issue with that is I don't know if the cutout's gonna be the same size and I'm retrofitting some undercovered light and I'll show you what I'm gonna use in a minute for that. Again, they have recessed undercovered lights. So I've got these slimline ones that are just gonna sit over the top height hopefully and they've got a nice slim profile. So these are the down lights I'm installing today. Uh, called solos i've been installing these for years now and they're one of the first ones that i came across which has got a toggle button on the top to change the color temperature and i've just kind of stuck with them really i know there's others about now but these are just the ones that i've used so i've just popped down the light and i'm just going to see if the hole is the same size for my new ones let's hope it is What I like about these down lights is they are obviously nice and easy to fit and they come with two bezel options. They come with a white and they come with a brushed chrome. These are the eight watt ones and they also come in a 10 watt one, I believe. But this is only a small kitchen, so the lower wattage is absolutely fine. Nice cup of tea. Leave a comment below if you know why I've left this one till last. If you know, you know. There's a couple of reasons why I really like these down lights. You know when you go and you ask a customer what down lights they want and they're not really sure, well these give you the option of the white bezel, the brushed bezel, and you can also get a chrome bezel for them. You have the three color temperatures, the cool white, the daylight, and the warm white. And what I do like is with the bezels, they're magnetic. Easy. Okay, next I'm doing the undercovered lights and this is gonna be problematic. So we have these recessed lights here and when I pop them down, look what they've done with that cable route. Inside the cupboard, it's like double shell. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do here yet. I'm gonna get out of the new light fittings and see what I can do, see if I can fish the cables up to the top of the units. <laughs> The reason I chose these was they're quite low profile and I was hoping they would just cover the hole quite nicely. Uh, that's nice, lovely job, well done. Single insulated cables, very nice. Part of being an electrician is you're constantly problem solving. So I think what I'm gonna do in this case is basically disregard this cable route completely. I know there's a cavity down the back, so I'm gonna drill a small pilot hole here and just see if I can get that cable route and then feed my new cable down that way. And then the way that these lights work is they link off each other and these links aren't long enough to go back up again. So I'm gonna neatly clip the cable to the second light fitting, I think. I think that's the best thing to do here. make a bigger hole now. I can basically feed this cable down and I can get this connector through the hole, which I can. So I'm gonna get a rod, chuck it down and see what happens. I have this rod here that every new Sparky has one of these, I think where the end has come off. There's only a meter on that supply cable. So hopefully it's long enough. Just about got enough. The way this works is you have this base which you fix to the bottom of the unit and then the light goes in there like that and then you have another magnetic bezel. So that's this job basically done. I've got some bathroom lights to do and a ground floor utility down like to change as well but there's no point in me showing you that really next week i am at a mate's extension and to be honest with you it's crazy it's massive and it's just been made up as we go along things are already going wrong there 
and he's going like a bullet a gate. So, and I'm also doing an Anderson charger next week, which I was gonna do a walkthrough on the installation on that. So if you're interested in those two things, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. So I've just had a call from a customer saying that they've got a burning smell coming from their consumer unit when their car's on charge. So we're off to look at that now, should be interesting. So I've just arrived at the property. Customer isn't in at the minute, but Southern and Scottish Energy are here as well because apparently cutouts melted. So when I get a chance to get in, I will have a look and show you what's happened. I'm in the garage. I've checked my installation and it's absolutely fine. But what the problem is, is they've recently had their meter changed. And as you can see on that live conductor, it has melted away. So what this means is the DNO are here with me today and they are going to get that cutout changed and that meter is going to have to also be replaced as there are, as there are signs of burning on that terminal also. Now seeing what I've just shown you is fairly concerning obviously as that cable that goes from the cutout into the meter there's no actual protection on that so you are really relying on someone to spot it or eventually it will just burn out. I'm running a bit behind today so I'm going to leave it there I hope you've enjoyed the video and a little insight into what I do apart from EV chargers. Please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel.